All right, we got a smart car here. Uh, today we're gonna be addressing the uh, trouble code that it has. It is a P26AB um, engine coolant bypass valve stuck open. It's a really common code for these smart cars. It's not the biggest job in the world, so it can definitely be done. Uh, what that is, is you have a thermostat in your car. Most are mechanical, the spring, more pressure than the spring would release um, or open. It's causing the thermostat to be open, allowing coolant to go in and circulate. Um, this car actually has a vacuum operated thermostat. So once the coolant reaches a certain temperature, then this valve will open, allowing coolant to uh, flow through the thermostat. But the problem is it's a really cheap valve and they break a lot or just fail internally. Um, so that's why we're getting this code that the valve is stuck open. Um, it, it doesn't actuate anymore. So it's basically like the thermostat is stuck open as well. So it'll never reach an operating temperature. Um, it's not necessarily the diaphragm that's bad, but it's more likely than this valve. It's pretty common and it's uh, not the hardest thing to do. But a lot of people, I've never seen a video on it. So that's why we're doing it today. And then I'll also post this part in the description as well. Um, so you guys can replace it on your own as well. So yeah, we'll get to starting on replacing it. It shouldn't take more than like maybe an hour tops. We'll see though. All right, so we're gonna start by just taking this uh, moisture washer reservoir out. There's a, if you look on the inside here, there's a 10 millimeter. It's right, it's really hard to see with the camera, but it's right in there. So we'll go ahead and take that out. And then from there, we'll see what else we need to take out. I think it can be. It's possible to get around it, but it looks like a pin and I think I'd be struggling longer. Um, so I don't take this guy out. So we'll just start with this 10 millimeter on the side there. All right. So after trying to unscrew it, mine actually just broke the fuck off. Um, it's a really cheap kind of, I don't know, bracket. Um, it looks like it might be able to be like slided off or pushed off, but the screw was not going anywhere with it. Um, it might be able to just be, you can try pushing the bracket, pushing this pump out this way and then trying to free it. Um, but, but mine didn't go well, so that's okay. We'll, we'll put a hole through and we'll do a little, a little zip tie or something to hold it back in place. It's not a big deal. After that, we can just put it up, push it up. And then uh, we'll disconnect a sensor here. And then these lines will probably just leave on. And then we'll wiggle it out in one second here. All right, so to access the bracket, uh, to pull the bracket off, there's these two um, inner uh, bolts. And it is a five um, for a hex. So just get that, two bolts in there, um, and then we'll take the bracket off and then we'll go about disconnecting the hoses. All right, perfect. So now we have that bracket um, out, we'll leave it hanging. There's a um, little metal tab on this connector here. Uh, you just need a pick or some type of little tool and get that little metal piece off of the connector out. And that's really hard to see the light and stuff gonna have some bad angle. But you just pop, you just push this guy out and then the sensor will pull out uh, or the connector. Um, and then mine at least came with the little diaphragm and these two hoses here. So once I'm done with this connector, then I'm going to go ahead and pull these guys off as well. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So once you're done um, pulling this little metal tab out for that connector, then you can just pull this hose off, this little guy here. And then to pull these guys off is pretty actually simple. You just want to make sure to not break these guys. But you just push these two, you push this tab in, right? Push it, and you kind of need two hands. Um, but you push it in, and then you separate the hose with your hand. And that's the second one. So uh, it's, 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 you just push it in, and it'll release. And you don't want to go too crazy on it. There you go. That's it. And we'll replace it with our new one. We'll put everything back together. All right, we got a new one in. Now all we gotta do is um, put our washer fluid reservoir in. I'll probably pull this screw out and put a zip tie through it or something, or maybe I'll put it back on the bracket. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the video. After that, you clear codes, drive it around. Um, if you have a scan tool, you can check live data and um, the coolant should get to an operating temperature now. Um, and then yeah, go from there. Um, that's it. So hope you enjoy the video. Peace.